there was a moment, a terrifying moment, where when I first saw the purple suit next to Sparky, my brain went, oh, it's the hoax wall. It's Sparky and the purple man animatronic. <gasps> and, uh, <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and those with the good sense to do away with the whole notion, I welcome you to the premier audio medium for all your Fazbear entertainment needs, the Freddy Fazbear Pizza Podcast. Note, FFPP is not responsible for any loss of appetite, disinterest, dismemberment, or other legally classified statuses. So strap in and enjoy. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Freddy Fazbear Pizza Podcast. I am the host with the Toast Rye Toast here with a very special guest. Why don't you go and introduce yourself? Hey, guys, it's JoJo or something. I'm back from my six-month absence from the internet. I posted one video in April, and I disappeared. Hi, I'm Valid back. and based. Um, <laughs> so, uh... I brought, uh, we're going to be talking about, I'm sh sure you've seen the title and thumbnail. If uh, Well, at least if you're on YouTube. I know if you're, you're on Spotify, you just get the title. I don't think Spotify has the thumbnail. I don't you know get the exactly title. how the thumbnails work. I think you just get the title. But we're talking about shipping culture today. So if you're wondering why, uh, when I think of, <laughs> now this is more <laughs> of a new problem. Because I have ADHD and all of my memories are very compartmentalized to like, uh, I have like thumbnail memory where like I need to associate one idea with each person I know. And uh, <laughs> when I think of your work, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the timeline video that I saw. And the first when I think of the timeline video, the first thing that comes, comes to mind is William and Henry's relationship. So uh, when <laughs> I was thinking of that. Where I just kind of slid the like, oh, yeah, and their slight homoerotic relationship. And I just like slid out that, that line. Where I slid it through the video. Yeah, yeah, what, that that line. I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Um, so <laughs> I, we I wanted to talk about the shipping culture specifically in the FNAF fandom because I think it's kind of weirdly toxic, and in both directions. Weirdly toxic. So FNAF shipping culture is straight horrific. It's horrendous. Yeah. And I think a part of that is like, I have a couple like topics pointed up here. I will say before getting into it, uh, to make it abundantly clear uh i'm pan and non-binary so we're gonna be getting into some topics about homophobia topics about I, I wanted to be super clear everyone on this podcast and every guest i ever bring on to, at, to the best of my knowledge very accepting of the lgbt community very okay. accepting of gender identity it's like uh, the whole spectrum so i feel like most of the fnaf community which I think is why Scott got canceled back in 2021 is because most of the community falls somewhere on that spectrum. Spectrum. Whoa. See, I just you say, and I I agree with you most, but like I make one like Freddie Bonnie post, even in like half joking, and like a third of my replies are like, "No, that's that's dumb. You're dumb. That's stupid. The, they're not they're not gay," or and like some of them are even like just straight up homophobic. Like, yeah, no, that sounds about right. Which, to be fair, it's Twitter, so, you know, uh, what, what can you expect with Twitter besides homophobia? Um, yeah, pretty much. No, but what do, what do you think the state of shipping in the fandom is like? I mean, I just kind of feel like when I think shipping in the fandom, um, I just kind of think of, of course, since Ruin came out and we got the little, like, poster of Bonnie Mm -hmm. um like writing like oh like or from freddy saying like all my love freddy um i feel like everybody now is just like oh my gosh the robots are gay but like i mean there's this like culture of like the um like the william and henry like the joke i made i feel like it's like a big one but then there's mm -hmm. like all the weird like i don't know if like back in like 2014 2015 i was not one of these people but i just remember seeing all this foxy x mangle art everywhere I don't all I you know, I, I think I remember seeing like one or I don't remember seeing it often, but I do remember seeing it. Uh, and it's one of those things where like I feel like with FNAF specifically, the shipping culture is weird, honestly, part partly because the majority of these characters are either robots or characters that you can't ship there's or very few kids. like yeah exactly like characters that you can't and should not <laughs> ship so like there there's very few like shippable alive of age people so a lot of it just defaults to the robots and even then yeah. some of the robots i would say you shouldn't ship okay um like specifically talking about the movie how intrinsically 
the animatronics in the movie are, how so, intrinsically linked they are to being the children within them, I would say that's kind of iffy. Yeah, they're they were very they made them, which I think was a good thing that they made them because I think it added. Yeah. Even though the, I wouldn't say the movie was scary, but I think it's what added no. adds to like the horror of the series and what's happening throughout it is they're still kids. They're literally like they act childlike yeah. because they are children. And like yeah, the movie really reminded us like hey remember what actually happens in this story yeah no i feel like that was scott being like y'all please please stop yeah <laughs> like yeah. scott's just sitting here like please no this is like you know he's over here like y'all don't like my christian games i'm gonna make a scary game and then the fandom made something far scarier than what final yeah. phrase ever could be and i'm not talking about the um, vhs tapes oh yeah no the honestly the vhs tapes are kind of overplayed at this point um but I, I yeah I agree with that and it's like and I think now there is the overcorrection right where I've seen where people will have like talking about like FNAF one the video game when someone will like jokingly be like oh yeah Bonnie's hot and then someone will be like the one possessed by a dead kid and it's like all right let's let's be super reasonable here if we're talking about fucking animatronics in a video game we're very much talking about the visual design of the animatronic there is no <laughs> characterization from any character before like fnaf 4 in this entire franchise oh like, yeah like the first like three games it's literally like boo ah oh no yeah that's it it's, you know <laughs> it was literally boo ah and ayo toy chica that was it. Literally, like, all of it was just that. That's but, yeah, like, I, I think the humanization of the animatronics is something that definitely makes shipping culture weird. Um, because I feel like the animatronics are the main things that do get shipped because that's, like, the majority of the characters. And then it's, like, it, it's weird. It depends on the game. It depends on the instance. And I, I think, like we said, the movie really feels like hey you probably shouldn't ship those animatronics because those are definitely still like those are kids like you should not be shipping kids like uh, but then you look at something like security breach and like not only are those animatronics built in very specific ways they're probably not even haunted oh <laughs> like, I, I know like people talk about like the michael afton in like glamrock freddy thing i'm like mm -hmm. why can't they just die like, why don't we just have Freddy and Bonnie living their la 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 happy life? Because Fazbear Incorporated is in fact progressive and they program these robots to be gay. Why can't it be like that? Why do we have True. to go with like the souls or gay and long lost lovers from the 80s or something? Like, no. Fazbear yeah, I, Incorporated I, is, is progressive. I could see the argument that like Michael is possessing Glamrock Freddy. I don't think it's true, but I see that argument. Um, but I, I honestly, I honestly think all four of the glam rock animatronics are not possessed by anything. Maybe. I think if any of them are, it's glam rock Bonnie, just because of how weirdly like activated he still is. Oh. Um. Yeah, that was weird. But but even then, like not only are they not possessed, but they're all hot. Like I feel like <laughs> I feel like <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> It's like it's not only are they all hot, but then also like they are all like a little bit gay, right? Like all of them, I would say. I mean, Freddie I feel and like Bonnie, the Roxy and the Roxy Chica ships as well. I feel like are one of the like. I really see those ships. Ones. I see the the theory slash headcanon that Roxy is uh, trans because like the animatronic base was once Foxy. Mm -hmm. I like that theory slash headcanon. You know what it's I mean? Good so head, like it's a good headcanon. It's it's pretty good. And Chica, uh, Chica vogues in all the... Glamrock Chica is voguing in like half of her posters. So she's a lesbian. We know Clearly. this. Um, that's canon. And then <laughs> Freddie Freddy and Bonnie, obviously romantically pa romantic partners. So they're both gay. Uh, yes. Monty is the most bisexual man I've ever seen. So like he, he when we look at these characters... He really does. Uh, and th that's another thing. Like all these characters are based off of Glamrock... 80s like of yeah semi based off of like glam rock 80s like that era was very like loosey goosey free love like that was the whole point freddie mercury like you said like one of the most iconic like gay celebrities out there you know so to, to look me high. in the eyes and tell me the bear with like glam rock makeup one earring uh lightning stripe down his chest look me in the eyes and be like there's no way in hell that he's gay you're You've got to just be homophobic at that point. There's no way in hell <laughs> like, that he's gay. 
like I, I'm just looking I'm at not the saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that he has to be, but if you're saying he can't be, nah, get the fuck out of here. Like, but that is one like of the, the people the that things like I had... humanify the animatronics mm-hmm. and do that fan art. That right there, that'll tell you case in point. They're all gay, and maybe it's just the fandom. Oh yeah, but like you look at the way people draw them as humans, and they all just look kind of gay. Yeah, like, that's it. And it's based. Man, this is really uh, making like... me think I should give up on Springtrap and just draw the glam rocks being gay or something. Well, Springtrap is a great point here, right? Because I feel like Springtrap is probably the Delilah most thirsted after animatronic. <laughs> like weirdly, <laughs> to like to me, that's weird because I don't find I- I'm not a monster fucker, so I've never found Springtrap as a design to be attractive. Why is the most horrific creature the one that everybody's like, "Ayo, why he kind of." Right, like I feel like, I'm like what? the majority of like art I see on Twitter when and en- whenever anyone's trying to make an animatronic like kind of hot, it's always of Springtrap for some reason, <laughs> no, and I and don't like, understand it. I'm like, why are we saying that? Like, we're like, hey, yo, Springtrap kind of. You mean the serial killer? Like, like is, is it just what? because it's a holdover of like him being the first confirmed like adult man in the entire franchise? Probably. <laughs> like, because besides that, we had no visual for any other adult in the series up until that point. I mean, we saw what the fuck we. I, I, I listen. I, I've been in this franchise. I've been in this fandom since 2014. Sam, I've been in the trenches. I remember Vincent. Okay, and the fact that there was that much art about like a seven pixel stick figure is insane to me. <laughs> like. That just unlocked a memory in, like, that just shook me to my core. A lot of people think that my channel name comes from the Vincent, like, whole saga. Because apparently, and I didn't remember this, but apparently, for whatever reason, the Vincent character, like, loved Toast. What? Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's what? what? That was my reaction. I'm like, I don't, how the fuck do you remember? I don't remember that. Like, and for the record, no, it's just a pun off of my name, which is Riley. That's, yeah, it's literally just a pun. Hey, at least you um, came up with something more creative. I went, my name's like JoJo or something. I don't know. My username's gonna wait a minute. Hey, it stuck. That's all that matters. It That's worked. All- <laughs> it worked. Um, I mean, but yeah. T- so there's the weird. There's that that amount where it's like there's so few characters in this franchise that it's one of those things that like the the fandom kind of just like begs for scraps of anything to work with which is partially why i think um in game vanessa gets shipped around with a lot of things because like it, one of the very one of not one of I, i'm gonna say the only fully modeled human character that is an adult Vanessa. Vanessa like like we have the Mike Sprite and that's the and the the William Afton Sprite but it's talking about 3D models there's one and it's Vanessa it's, yeah no because like there's definitely some like Vanny Vanessa X like burn trap spring trap stuff out there somewhere yeah I've, I've seen and it I mean Twitter. look they I've didn't, didn't have to make Twitter. Vanny built like that if they don't they didn't <laughs> need to one make Vanny built like that and two make her talk like that over the intercoms if they didn't want people shipping her with every other character in no, the franchise. But this is like come to the main stage Gregory. You deserve, you deserve a, reward. a reward. Like, come <laughs> on. Who the fuck are you talking to? <laughs> like, like <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa, that's a child. That's a child. Yeah, you Vanessa, what the like fuck that. are you talking to? Hey, yo. Um, like, oh my no, gosh. No, it, 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 and it, uh, when I see like a, a franchise and a fandom, because I feel like shipping is so inherent in fandom culture and FNAF in particular isn't really well suited for shipping, yeah, which is why we get so many weird ships. Because you can't really X-Mangle. have fandom without shipping. Exactly. Like you can't really, the internet doesn't understand fandom without shipping. So if we have fandom, we have to have shipping. Yeah. Even if we have like three fucking characters to work with. Yeah, no, you know what? And if there's only three characters, that's not an even number. So obviously they have to be a throuple. Exactly. Like big brain. Um, oh my God. And then now talk about shipping and adult characters. You mentioned it before we started recording. Mike and Vanessa in the movie. There I is. made my roommate watch you. the movie and they had so much sexual tension for why? They do. Why like literally they the, like, f- the first time Vanessa time? meets 
the first time Vanessa meets Mike within a, within an hour, she's like, "Hey, do you want to dance?" Like, no way. Whoa, like, hello. Like, it's the mother that Abby needs because wait, did the mom? No, wasn't the mom do? The mom just like died, right? The mom just died, and then it's implied that the dad either killed himself or left. All we all we have from the dad is dad couldn't handle it, so dot dot dot. That's all we know. Yeah, so either he like, killed himself or he like just ditched. I don't know. Yeah. Which, if he ditched, means he's alive. FNAF 2 movie? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going for ditched, but... I, I think ditched because I think it would... That feels like, to me, a very clever way to have a twist that doesn't feel like a retcon. Okay. To say, like, he couldn't handle it so, and then it's implied he's dead, but he's not. Hear me out. Mm-hmm. So you know how there's the theory that Mike's dad is like the Henry stand-in because there's a guy that looks like Mike's dad working on the animatronics in the back of the training tape, like in the background? Correct. Yeah. What if it's not that he couldn't handle it and he dipped, which is like an actual theory I've had for ages, as I've always thought maybe Henry got convicted and that's why he wasn't there for 30 years. What if he's mm-hmm. just in jail because he got convicted instead of William? It's not something he did. I can see he just that, got, but like, I feel dripped, like... Like just jailed. I see. Okay, I do. One of my, I do think that in game Henry was in jail for some amount of time, and that's where he is in the narrative. But f- I feel like that'd be a weird way to say he's in jail. Uh, like he couldn't handle it. So dot dot dot. That doesn't track to me as so he went and got arrested. Yeah, like, maybe they're just <laughs> flushing it out. Maybe Scott's gonna watch yeah. this and then be like, oh my gosh, JoJo's a genius, and then just just if steal if my it idea. is jail. If it turns out that uh, Mike's dad is in jail, then I will say that that is true. And Scott, if you're watching, please, one fucking Reddit post, say if the Tales books are canon or not. That's all I fucking need, Scott. Please, (laughs) dear God. Scott. Please, dear God. All I need to know is if my Mrs. Afton had cancer theory was right. I will become a devout Christian, Scott. I swear to God. (laughs) Well, I won't swear to God. If you tell if you if you if you tell us on Reddit, I'll buy you a, um, I'll, I'll buy you a Bible with your name engraved on it. I feel like that's sacrilege. Can you can yeah. you carve into a Bible? I got one for my baptism and for my first communion because I was raised Catholic. That's I wild. have one with my my name engraved in the front of it. It is a my thing. family. It's funny we moved around a lot and neither of my parents are religious, but they wanted me to be. But because they weren't religious, they didn't understand that they were like different Christian denominations. So whenever we moved, they just put me in the nearest Christian denomination church. Turns out it was never the same one. So like first it was Catholic, like- first it was Catholic, then it was Christian, then it was Lutheran, then it was Baptist, then it was Lutheran again. Like it was, it was. Then weird. it was Methodist, then it was Orthodox. You would just keep. Going. I will say, and as somebody who shopped around in Christianity. Uh, Lutheranism is the best one. I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't know if that's like weird to say. (laughs) I don't know if that's like religious. I don't fucking know. Lutherans are the best Christians. I'm just, as someone who's been to like five different ones. Okay. So like, I just have this vivid memory thinking of like Lutheran churches. I'm going to go way off subject for a second, but you know, that's Mm -hmm. what this podcast is for. We're going way off subject. That's what podcasts are for. Um, so my dad was raised Catholic. My mom married my dad. My mom's parents were raised Orthodox and she was raised Orthodox. And then my okay. uncle was raised Lutheran. So mm-hmm. my grandparents are Very Orthodox different. and their son is Orthodox. My mom is Catholic. Her sister is Lutheran. So in Catholicism, you get your first communion and then you can only get it like the Eucharist after you've had your first communion. In Orthodox, yeah. they have communion and they have church bread, which is like blessed bread that anybody can eat. And it's just blessed. You just eat the blessing, basically. Well, that's nice. Okay. I'm making that a sticker. And then Lutheran has your first communion. But instead of it being like a host, it's actually leavened bread instead of unleavened bread, like in yep. Catholicism. And I just remember my brother, because we would go to my grandparents' church a lot when we were little. And we'd all get the church bread. Well, we went to my cousin's mm-hmm. Lutheran church. And he just broke out in tears, like just full on hysterically sobbing because he couldn't have quote the church bread which is the bread you needed your first communion for Oops. for lutherans and it was it lives rent free in my brain it really does i every lutheran church i've been to has been super chill um the like the one that i went to when i was really young they did probably the smartest thing i've ever seen a church do for kids where the um the like program the back of it was a coloring and activity page oh that's and then such halfway a good idea. through 
halfway through the mass, they called up all the kids to sit around the altar and they just told like a Bible story and then sent them back. That's actually like, so smart. It was so smart. And like you said, the like when they sent around um the I believe it's called the Eucharist, if I remember my yeah, religion Eucharist. correctly. Um, and the wine, when they sent all that around for the kids or the un uh, baptized, they also sent out they sent out regular bread and grape juice. It was pretty dope. Oh, like, the regular bread is so cute. Wait, um, that's actually adorable. Yeah, no, you can so, yeah. actually buy like the hosts. And I'm not even going to lie. Um, some of my classmates did this my freshman year of high school because I went to Catholic school. And so you can buy. That sucks. On, it actually was, it was an experience. I should do an entire video on my experience in Catholic school because like it is a fever dream. It is not do high a school musical. Do, re, like dead ass, <laughs> do a draw my life of that. That would actually like pop off. That probably would. But do you realize how much drawing that would, that would require? Oh, well. Uh, I, yeah. That's literally my, that's literally my major um but you can actually buy so in catholicism when they consecrate the bread it's called the transubstantiation where the bread becomes like jesus's body and blood so we believe that it's literally the body and blood but you can buy the okay. unconsecrated hosts online from literally church supply stores and tell me what i pulled up to first period english class little 14 year old me strolls in there and this guy is eating just straight out of the box of these unconsecrated hosts. And the but teacher takes so one. But no, they so bad. <laughs> no, no, taste... no, no, they're, no, they're fantastic. I don't know what you're talking about, but they are fantastic. If if we're talking about the same fucking unflavored melt-in-your-mouth wafer that I'm thinking of, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> All I all I remember from the like two years I was in a Catholic church was it was I was told put that shit in your mouth and let it melt onto your tongue and then you have the worst fucking feeling in your mouth for the next hour. <laughs> no, what are you talking? Mine are not bad. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I'm looking. They at were the like these trap, and I just accidentally I made the face like too short, and I just went to like stretch out the um face a little bit, and the way I cut the face, it looks like he's got like this kind of sexy malicious grin we're just gonna erase oh, that no. real bad. it's no, on theme no, no we cannot draw a sexy spring trap i was gonna make this into a print and sell it it has to be scary all it right can't be sexy. now i will say i don't think spring trap is sexy no it's literally a rotting corpse but <laughs> there is Bye. there is an artist that keeps popping up on my twitter timeline and they have this like AU, I guess, where it's Springtrap and Vanny, not as like a couple, but as like a mentor mentee relationship. And Springtrap's just like the tired dad, and she's like the excited Zoomer. Oh gosh, it is very cute. Okay, I'll I'll find it on. Twitter. And that artist, that artist Springtrap, is kind of hot. I will say. <laughs> But that's more it's like a, a praise of the man. artist. It's a, that's it's, more the praise of the artist than the actual character of Springtrap. Because okay. the character of Springtrap is not attractive in any way to me. Like, no hate the furries, but it's literally a furry with a corpse inside of it. There is nothing special about that. It's a fursuit with a corpse in it. It's just a stinky fursuit. It's literally just a stinky fursuit. Aftermath um, of the, uh, what's it called? The, um, what is it? Homestuck uh, Sharpie incident. Oh God! I was a homestucker throughout. <laughs> I was most never a homestucker. I was never a homestucker. I was. Oh God! I didn't do sharpie, but like I, I did my first con. I did not. Um, what the hell is it called when you like ba put uh, baby powder on body paint? Um. Oh. Um, oh. Oh. Like powder. You do. Um. Shoot. What is literally just called powdering? It's. Um. Oh, like setting. Yeah. You powder. You set yeah. It. You set the makeup so it doesn't get on everything. My first convention, I did not do that. Um. I will say. I learned very quickly that I had to, and luckily, like, a con parent was like, hey, here's some baby powder. So, like, I only got it on, like, some stuff, like, a door, a doorknob, and then, like, the shit in the bathroom to set it while I was there. That's not too but bad. It could always I, be worse. It could always be worse. It, luckily, my my um, self-consciousness outweighed my idiocy at that moment. Um, yeah. I tried to get into cosplay, but I had, like, a crazy ex-best friend from high school who was a cosplayer mm -hmm. and they just kind of ruined that for me. I don't know. I, I love cosplay. I want to get back into cosplay, but I haven't done it since high school for obvious reasons. I actually know since like halfway through college for obvious reasons, just like, you know, work 
I have work. two kids now. You know? <laughs> like, I feel like... It, I'm very busy. I'm already, like... I joke that I'm, like, a family disappointment because I'm, like, an art major and obviously I'm going to make no money. I'm a graphic design major and it's, it's a good mm-hmm. career. It's a good career. If you want to do graphic design, do it. But I joke that I'm, like, the family degenerate. I don't think that they can take cosplayer on top of artist... And it's too late creator. for it's too late for my family because I already have many pictures of me in cosplay, so it's way too late for them. It's too late. Just start posting them. Make an OnlyFans, except it's just high school rise like cosplay posts. The joke for a while has been that I'm gonna make an OnlyFans, but it's just gonna be really high quality shots of baking bread, just like really high quality shots. Of I would it. pay for that. But I would pay so much money for that. It, it seems I want to do it, but it's going to have to wait until I actually have like a good camera because I'm still using a webcam and it's a great webcam. But like until I have like a Sony a 400 or something like that, I'm not going to be like it, I can't take high quality photos. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I literally just I just use a phone. I'm going to be so real. I just use a phone for everything. It works. Yeah. I mean, that it works. It's a matter of like I just I'm I'm been told and I do agree, but I have been told. I am kind of snooty when it comes to the quality of my own stuff where it, when it like audio and video, like I'm, I will say, I readily admit I am an audio snob. Whenever like the audio doesn't sound exactly the way I want it, I'll put like a disclaimer in a video and be like, Hey, I'm sorry. The audio is shit today. And then all the comments would be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> no, literally. I'm always like, bro, I'm using an old snowball mic from literally God knows when that I stole from said crazy ex. I did not steal it. Actually, they gave it to me and I never gave it back because you know, that's they went crazy. It's that's, not, that's keeping. It's, it's uh, borrowing without permission. I do think sometime in the future, when I get to like start going to conventions again, I am going to be cosplaying. I don't know when that will be ideally within a year or two. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I, I, I really do enjoy <laughs> cosplaying. It's just a matter of time because it takes so much time um like let alone going to the convention but like making the fucking cosplay i've actually never been to a convention before they're really fun i highly recommend it it's it's my roman empire that i've never been to a convention and i just like yeah. wake up that in concerts i've never been to either of those and it's my roman empire that's wild Con- yeah. go to go to <laughs> are you like near a city don't dox yourself are you near any city i am near a big city just go to local shows. They're like 10 bucks. Like <laughs> I really need to go yeah, to like no, a Facebook group to. that is like, go to a local Facebook group that just talks about like local shows. They're 10 to 15 bucks. When people say there's no free entertainment, if you live in a rural area, that's true. But if you're near a city, there are so many like five to $20 local shows that are like genuinely pretty fucking good. A lot of them are shit. Yeah, but that's no. kind of that's that's kind of the luck of the draw and part of the fun is like paying fifteen bucks and being bored out of your mind. Okay, I've been in a local show that we did as a fundraiser for my high school because you know private Catholic school. Uh, we fundraised mm-hmm. for a field trip to Hawaii, which is insane to say out loud. And yeah. I was the only student that volunteered to play music, so it was me, my band director, and just four random men. In this random house's really basement funny. playing music. Oh my gosh, no. And I was like 16. So I was like just a child. Me and my trombone like roll up to this house and I'm like, oh, wow. This is, wow, this is nice. They ain't got no roaches or nothing. Uh-uh. That's really funny. Um, you know, okay. I guess. Spring to, to, is to looking put less, a, Yeah. He's looking less sexy now. That's good. The- <laughs> I guess to put a pin and to move back to FNAF, uh, for those <laughs> wondering, just- if I ever cosplay like FNAF, I'm not going to be making a suit because Jesus Christ, I'm not that. I do not have that talent nor the patience for that. Yeah, no, and I two, see those and I'm like. Oh my God. Uh, what? The regular sauce? The like best oh. fucking FNAF cosplayer in the world? <laughs> like, I just want to know if. They ever open commissions? I just know those suits would be like 10k at least. Oh yeah, like at probably least closer to and, 20. And, and deserved. Like I, whatever price the regular sauce says they cost, I believe it 100. And, and, and like I don't and even want to would... know how much the filament alone costs. Plus tip. Um, but um, and one of the limitations with me cosplaying is the character needs to have long hair. I cannot have short hair. It just 
I do not feel comfortable with short hair. It ne- the character needs to have long hair or a big enough hat that I can hide the hair in. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I think you should just um, I think you should just dress up Vincent. Is that his name? I just totally blanked on it. Please. I do cannot. It. I, I would cannot. pay you. I would literally no, give I, you like five whole dollars. I'd rather lay in the street than dress as Vincent and go to a convention. I, I think I really would. I, I, how would I, you feel if I cosplayed as you? It would be a little weird. Um, kind of funny. <laughs> um, I, I'll cosplay as uh, Matt Pat because everybody um, in my Discord server says that I look like Matt Pat. And I'm Matt Pat's long lost child has been the headcanon for a while now. That's funny. It's I awful. don't see it, but I, I don't see it, but it is funny. Um, it's because the thumbnail of the timeline video, I was wearing the exact same color shirt as like the picture mm. I grabbed of Matt Pat off of Google. And everybody's like, hey, yo, why does JoJo kind of look like Matt Pat? I'm like, no, please. Yeah. I'm just a little uh, guy. With, with the charity stream I did like a year ago, one of the rewards that ha- I have not made good on was I have to do a made outfit stream. Now, part of the reason I never made good on it was you worked at a I was school. still working. Yeah, I was still working at a high school. Like, I remember you God forbid this. any parent sees that and then like sends it to the principal, I lose my job. But hey, <laughs> I don't work at a high school anymore. So like You work in your <laughs> basement with a cat. Exactly. Which is objectively so, better. But now there's there's twofold. So one, I would rather I would do a made outfit stream a thousand times before even getting close to a Vincent costume. And two, um, I am fully comfortable wearing a maid outfit. I mean, right now, because we are in between places, we live with Amanda's family, my wife. Oh God. If her father (laughs) sees me in a maid outfit, our relationship will be forever changed. And I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to cross that bridge. So I think it will have to once again wait until we are in our own place. Oh my again. gosh! Thinking of Fem Rai, maybe now is a good time for you to open that package. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Do you want to give the audience at home some yeah. context for the thing I'm holding in my uh, hand? Without doxing us this time, which without is, doxing us, which this is time? funny because literally, like my return address is my actual address when I ship out packages because I don't have a P.O. box. So funny enough, I do have a P.O. box. So I, I didn't I only doxed you. That was a malicious dox. So <laughs> I'm canceling uh, it's open, but Twitter. it's facing away from me. OK, so the context of this was at the charity stream. Um, one of the so my charity stream that we did back in May for St. Jude, which was really fun. Mm-hmm. We had like ID's fantasy. We have right We had a few others. It was a blast. But one of the stretch goals was Rai was going to switch from their mask voice to like a high-pitched feminine voice. And we didn't hit it, but everybody in the comments is going Fem Chica Rai. Like literally Ash from I, I think I, Live was I, even rooting for it. Yeah, I and, think I, I gave a few lines um, just because like I, I, I think it was because like the stream was ending and I knew just because of technical difficulties and everything. My USB driver broke and my entire computer shut down and I have it on like video and record like everything just broke at the end. Yeah, my laptop is from when I was 14 and I'm almost 20. So like. So when I knew that it was like come everything was crashing down, I was like, okay, let me give a few lines because we're not gonna we're this the ship is sinking. Let me let me let the me feel sh- the audience. The a little ship bit. sunk. I don't even know how my laptop runs anymore. I need to buy a new one, but I'm broke. So y'all should totally um give me money on Kofi so I can buy a new laptop. Shameless plug. <laughs> But if anyone in the audience is wondering how, there's a really good channel. Um, I forget the channel name. Let me actually pull it up because I, I do know I do have a lot of because uh, my audience has been very open and welcoming. I know a, a significant portion of my audience is uh, either non-binary or, or trans or anything like that. Um, let me see if I can find the oh, the voice coach. Channel. Yeah, the, the voice coach. coach. Oh, man, yes. Um, cause she's so fucking good at what she does. I, I shouldn't even have to tell people where it is because literally I Google, I, I YouTube searched vocal feminization as the first result. So like you can find it, but specifically the YouTube channel trans voice lessons. She is incredibly talented. Uh, follow her instructions. It It's great. Um, but it, the the main trick that she goes into is it's a matter of constricting your vocal cords. I'm going to move my microphone up. So 
you know. The vo- the vocal cords, right? I, it's not quite up enough. I'm doing boom mic. Oh now. my gosh! The now vocal- we're really getting fem chica rye here. Now we're we are getting- officially so. The main reason that mask and femme voices sound different is the width of the throat and gravel. Those are like the two big things. Um, She goes into it more in depth where I think she describes it as like depth and resonance. I I believe the word she uses. Um, But the, the main thing you want to really focus on is masculine voices tend to be deeper. Not always. Pitch is not as important. Um... But there's there's a bit of power behind a masculine voice where you're using your diaphragm. You want to use your lungs. So it you takes mean like this? Especially. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. And, and it's I'm so used to <laughs> no, but you're right. You're right though. And I'm so used to speaking from my diaphragm, not only because I was I was like in as when I was raised, I was very masculine and I was I identified as male for like 16, 17, 18 years of my life. Um But also, like, I'm a singer, so, like, I was always drilled into, like, use your diaphragm, use your diaphragm, use your diaphragm, uh, because you have more air there. Um, But you want to not use, if you want to be masculine, if you want to sound masculine, you want to speak with your diaphragm, and you want to widen your throat. And the best way that you can practice doing that is kind of going into a yawn, and then you can make your voice sound deeper and more resonant without even, um lowering your tone i have not lowered my tone yet it's just more resonant what? Um, <laughs> yeah yeah you kind of go to a yawn and hold it um and then we'll open it but specifically the throat now that's the trick right because when you yawn your soft palate raises and that raising oh, your soft gonna... palate actually allows you to have a higher tone see and so I the, have... there's two separate things See, I'm told I have, like, a low voice for a woman. Like, especially, like, I'm a contra alto, like, because I did chorus for I mean, ages. Your, pitch, your pitch is lower than, than uh, average, I would say. But yeah. I would say it's, like, l- exceptionally low. It's not. It's definitely lower than average because, like, all my friends talk like mm-hmm. this. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm, I'm sitting here like, hey, guys, what's up? How you doing? Um, especially if I if don't And if you're mask. a masculine. Sp- I'm sorry? I said, especially if I don't mask, my voice just drops like this. And mm. I'm like, hey, guys, how you doing? Oh shit! I forgot that's to another, turn my voice that, on. <laughs> that's another thing. I I've realized that um, now. I I'm not diagnosed, nor is it suspected that I have autism, but I do have very strong ADHD. And my doctor explained that like some of the symptoms do overlap, and one of those things very heavily for me is masking. Um, and I've noticed that like when I am masking, my voice goes like up three octaves. Like, oh yeah, no, mine's I think the it's, same way. I'm. I'm diagnosed with ADHD. I have highly suspected autism and the ADHD mm-hmm. combo. If I forget to mask, I talk like this. But otherwise, I'm completely animated. Like, if you think that my camera voice is fake, it's not fake. It's just horrific masking. It really is. It's it's, it's the customer service voice for me. It's what, like, my masking and my customer service voice are the same thing. Um, Hi, thank you for calling Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. How can I help you? Exactly. That is my uh, actual customer speakers, service voice. If you want to sound more feminine for masculine speakers, the trick is the opposite. So you want to stop using your diaphragm and only speak with your lungs. And already, it's a little bit hard for me to do. It, it takes a little getting used to, but it already, you can have force in it, but you can't use your diaphragm. You have to use your lungs because then it's immediately a little less resonant. The second trick is you want to constrict the vocal cords. It just takes practice. She explains it way better than I can, but she also explains it with uh, doing it with a countdown and then using a key phrase that you know how it sounds so that way you know you're getting close. One other trick is to um, have a wider mouth when you're talking because it also helps with uh, stereotypical or on or like average sounding consonants. So it would kind of go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Heat from fire, you fire saw. from heat. Heat from fire, fire from heat. And then if you keep that tone without putting force or pressure behind it, keep the vocal cords constricted and keep a wide mouth, it sounds a lot more feminine. Okay, now do the cheek line. <laughs> oh, God. What were the cheek lines? Um, Gregory! Gregory! Your family is looking for you. Heat from fire, fire from heat. Gregory, your family is looking for you. Okay, now open the package. Open the package right now. Oh, God. What is this package? (laughs) It's so horrific. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. 
All right, let me move the mic down so you can see the horror on my face as I look at this. I have to be oh. careful with my mic stand. In the oh um, interim, the table that I'm using as a desk is not the proper shape to use my mic stand, so I have a plywood and that it's I'm attached to. I'm holding up what it is on my camera because I've got a good camera. And I, and I, can't, I cannot see your camera for the folks at home. So. Yes, no, so they can't see what I'm oh, showing you. Oh, Jesus y'all. Christ. <laughs> The Popcat Glamrock cheek is really funny. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, the Popcats were all done by uh, Corey. Um, but these are horrific. Um, I made the Photoshop Jesus at like Christ. 3 a.m. after the stream. And we That's ordered really all the charity stream merch like same day. So the second the stream ended and we had all the merch orders in, I just sent it off to my supplier. I was like, oh, I got a little extra money. Oh, supplier. I will say. Um, that right I there think- is the state of the fandom in a nutshell. That keychain. Yeah. You should put it on I your backpack. I think Corey is the same artist who I commissioned my... Yarg um, Foxy. Yarg they did Foxy. It. Corey's one yeah. of my absolute best friends. Super, um, super talented. Um, they're fantastic. I love I, them. I, Popcat's one of my favorite memes. And when I saw that uh, they were doing Popcat FNAF characters, I was like, hey, 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 hey. What are your commission rates? <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> like, I feel that. Like, I hopped in the DMs immediately. Like, hey, uh, do you take commissions? Like... <laughs> Oh my god! I remember them saying, "Oh yeah, that rye person you were talking about just commissioned me," and I was like, "My friend is gonna be famous." That's how I am with all my friends, though. I was so cute. I was so excited for them. But yeah, there's um, your horrific little present. I don't know if there's anything else in there. I don't remember if I sent you fast. It's so Uh I don't. If I, I didn't. Oh no, there's something else in there. Oh, there's definitely more doodads in there. Okay, what that's is... the... there is some buttons and I believe a sticker. I gotta open the little plastic package. Really bad oh, you get to see like my horrific logo. Baggies. Oh, this is the horrific logo I was talking about that my LLC is, and it's not anymore. Oh, the little axolotl? Mm-hmm. It's cute, I, though. Okay, but the branding itself. I will say, the branding, uh, I'm go- so you you already admitted it's not your current like a logo or LLC or anything like that. No. Uh, I'm going to be, so I'm going to be honest, axolotl, super cute. That font is fucking illegible. What what am I looking? At? It says <laughs> it's noodle white. noodle doodles, and it's a bunch of. I can, anytime I've done an in person market, I have a bunch of old people go. Noodle snoodle do new do new noodles. I'm like snoodle noodle doodles. Well, it's one of those things. the the text is like the snoodle noodle doodles is a mouthful, but it's not terrible. Like you can work with that. I'm just talking about your font. It's her- Unless no. it's in my face, I it is bu- it's hollow white bubble text that is illegible. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was losing business. Sorry. See, I think I that, kept I my think, branding I, the same. I kept the colors the same. I still have an axolotl on my logo. Also, okay. I'm literally wearing the it's, JoJo or something fit. It's like, tacky. I know. It's horrific. White was- text. No, 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 no. White text. Black outline. It's tacky, but it works. Okay, it does. I've done. I've been using drop shadows a lot more because I'm in school for graphic design, yeah. so I've actually, you know, learned some stuff. I don't know shit about graphic design. I just know whenever I do a thumbnail, uh, give the text a black outline and a drop shadow. You should pay That's me. To, you should pay me to do your thumbnail so I can actually afford school because I literally am taking out a loan to become an artist. Uh, I already have an artist, and I, I love. Barbara Joy is that, fantastic. I Barbara love Joy is them. So good. Oh my gosh, this I'm kind of jealous. I'm just gonna be showing off the other the buttons that were in there. That the fast cute. buttons. Oh my gosh, yes. Also, um, the Fazbear, I'm also going to send you the um, Fazberry Merry Christmas ornaments, which the name is horrendous, actually, but I love it. Actually, while you're bringing that up, before we move on to questions, and I'm already showing off your merch, you want to shout that out? Oh my gosh, yeah. We're doing, um, it is a one week. It ends December 1st. We're doing a pre-order for some really snazzy little FNAF keychains, not keychains, ornaments. Uh, we got Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. They're all Christmas up. Um, I've already ordered some for my supplier. They will be in by Christmas if you're domestic. So if you're in the U.S., we will get them to you in time for Christmas. I'm literally going to, second they get here, crunch them out and immediately send them out. And we're hoping to get them in by like the 5th or 6th. So they'll send out right then. There'll be 20 days for any fiascos to happen. If I get a notification that something gets lost in shipping, I'm just immediately resending them. But we have the pre-order link in my Kofi, which I'm guessing Brian will put in their bio or the description. Yep. Um, check it out. We've already sold yeah, the it'll, few be, it'll be top link. There's no limit, but the sale ends December 1st because that's when production's going to start. And these will get to you by Christmas unless you're international, then I can't guarantee it. But I'm going to try my hardest because it just, it depends. I've had stuff get to the UK in two days. I've had stuff get to the UK in two weeks. It just, it really depends, but definitely go get them. 
Um, I'll send Rye some horrific little graphic. The the one I sent you, Rye, that's kind of stupid, but it works. We, we yeah. can put it no, somewhere I mean, and be like, look at it. <laughs> look at this. Um, yeah, because clearly yeah, that I'm will a be professional the top artist. In the description. Yes, because like definitely, I'm going to send you some for your Christmas tree the second they get in because I ordered like a ton of extra sets. So yeah, I'm definitely guys them. get them cute. because we want this launch to be a success. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, my friend that we're working on it with, uh, Faith's Fuzzy Creations, you might know them for their uh, FNAF sensory video that's just absolutely adorable. I love it. It's so funny. Show it to your kids, right? It's hilarious. Babies love it. I don't think I saw that yet. Oh, I will send it to you. They hired yeah, a stop motion after... animator and they had them like make a sensory video using some FNAF figurines they made and then showed it to their like niece and the baby loved it. So it works. That's really funny. That's hilarious. Um, what else? That's it. But speaking of links in the description, uh, we're going to be moving on to questions. And the way I, reason I said that is if you have any questions or theories you want talked about or reviewed on the podcast, you can send them to Podcast at gmail.com or copy the email in the description because it is a pain to type out, I understand. Um, but that will be underneath the link we just talked about. But moving on to questions. Our first one comes in from Sunny. They, them. Thank you for your question. Which animatronics do you think are actually possessed and why? Now, I know we, we touched on this earlier, but this would be for all of them. Uh, I've seen a lot of theories on different animatronics being possessed. An example, the toys, Glamrock Freddy, Fun Times, and different missing child, missing child incidents. But I was curious about your opinion. So, do you want time to think it over? Because I've got thoughts, but I, I, if you've got thoughts immediately, you can take the floor. I've got my list right here in my brain. Pull it the, up. My FNAF floor logic. Whoop. Pop, there's my list. You should totally edit something in right there because that was just really fantastic. Um, FNAF 1 animatronics and the Withers, because they're the same, are absolutely haunted. I do not think yeah. the toys are haunted at all. The only exception would be maybe Mangle, but even then, I really don't see it. The dog theory is great, but I like the uh, Chica's Cupcake is the dog theory way better. And then, mm -hmm. so toys are not possessed. They just suck at their jobs. I just think that's way better because you don't want to think about a set of scrapped animatronics that's haunted because it would just throw the FNAF 6 ending way out. FNAF 3, it's just mm -hmm. Springtrap. And the fragments of the souls in the phantoms. So they're technically possessed, but they're really just apparitions of the same spirits we're trying to release. FNAF 4, no. Okay. They're nightmares or hallucinations or nightmare gas or whatever. Yeah, some Sister random location, bullshit, yep. Just Baby, and then Funtime Freddy and Foxy and Ballora, I think are really just in like the aggressive mode. I really don't think they're possessed. I think Baby's the only one possessed. And then, I mean, if you think about the Molten MCI, maybe, but I would be fragments, not full possession. FNAF 6, okay. Baby, Scrap Trap, Lefty because it's the puppet, and then Molten Freddy. Again, if you follow Molten MCI, which I kind of do, kind of don't. I don't know. Mm. Depends on the day. Definitely. Uh, Glamrocks, I don't think so. I really, I just think it would plot-wise make more sense for them not to be possessed than for them to be possessed. But I also see the evidence for the Michael is Glamrock Freddy thing. Okay. So I think the main thing we differ on is Molten MCI and where it comes from. So I agree. FNAF 1 and Withered, definitely definitely possessed. Um, and with the MCI specifically. Now, I differ with you on the toys. Now, I do, I do not think that the DCI, the Dead Child Incident, the kids killed at the FNAF 2 location, I don't think that they are the souls within the FNAF 2 animatronics. What I've been thinking for a while is that FNAF 2 sets up that the Withers are used for spare parts to repair the other animatronics. Um, and we know from Sister Location and from Remnant Injection that taking possessed metal from one thing and putting it into another thing can bring the possession with it. So, for for a long time now, I've been thinking that the FNAF, the toy animatronics are possessed, but they are it's less that they are like actively possessed by a spirit and more so that the um, possession, uh, like the spirit attached to the withered animatronics carries over when their parts are used to repair them. Um, that would be a good theory. And then that's why they act strange. Why they get stranger throughout the nights as well. That's actually, exactly. like they I keep forgot getting about that. They keep leaning on that. They keep um, using it then, for spare parts. That's how I explain um, Molten MCI. Because in my mind, that's where, now, I hate saying it, but the books introduce it as a thing that can happen. FNAF 2 is where the souls are split, where the five missing child incident souls are split between the originals and the toys. 
the toys being like unfinished, un not fully possessed, but still like fucking weird uh, possession. <laughs> um, so then okay, we move you know on what? To I'm gonna change my answer. I agree. Based one you over. Also, Mangle isn't uh, possessed by the dog. I agree. That's stupid. it's stupid. Um, <laughs> I like the theory that it's the cupcake. If we're gonna make any theories about the dog possessing anything, I've, which I think is totally evident in the movie, because why is that cupcake so feral? Why? Yeah, I, I've I've never liked that theory until the movie. I think the movie really characterized the cupcake as a dog, and like uh, now I'm kind of on board. Um, <laughs> Get your um, dog. But, it don't buy. Yes, it do. It that's, really does, and it growls about. when it attacks Mike. Like it, it was straight up growls. It was so cute, though. Honestly, we love uh, the it. It is kind of slay. Um, but <laughs> talking about the split between the FNAF one and FNAF two animatronics, part of the reason I think that is FNAF two sets up after the FNAF two location closes, the originals are held onto and the toys are scrapped. We know William was experimenting with Remnant in the sister location. I think the toys is where he got that Remnant. And that's why I think they're so twitchy and aggressive. And they're not, like, as refined or, like, as purposeful as the book, uh, like, in the books, the ones that are injected with Remnant, or even the originals to a point. Um, whereas in sister location, they're just kind of very strange and twitchy and all over the place. Um... And I think that's because the remnant that was used on them is the all of the toys that are already fragments of the MCI melted into one source and divvied up. Um, so, yeah. follow me happens, and the FNAF 1 kids move on. Because I think at the end of follow me, the FNAF 1 animatronics are taken apart, those kids move on. But now we still have fragments of the MCI lingering. In the fun times, into Ennard, into Molten Freddy. That That's I agree where with. I'm at. Because I don't that, think that, that the fun times, other than Baby, are fully possessed. Because they just don't act the same as Baby agreed. does. Like, I could see the argument for Ballora, but I think the reason she speaks so well is more so because of Ballora, not because of whatever's possessing her. Yeah, I agree. It's the characterization of her. Because this is when we really started, when we were talking about the characterization of characters mm -hmm. you know before we went on like five different tangents uh the characterization of the characters didn't really hit until sister location and i think that's when we were starting yeah. to get personalities because you think like funtime foxy was quiet didn't speak at all then ballora was very uh, motherly and kind of nurturing funtime freddy I... and bon bon were just crack and crack junior um i totally forgot um when we were talking about characterization and like shipping and all of that nonsense Oh, yeah. I forgot about the hottest character, Funtime Freddy. Or Funtime Foxy. <laughs> Funtime Foxy. The, hot, the hottest character in the series is Funtime Foxy. I totally forgot. Okay, and yeah. specifically because Funtime Foxy is gender fluid and have you heard their voice? I mean, come on now. <laughs> like, Funtime I mean, Foxy is one of the best voices in the franchise. I agree. I mean, no, um, like, no hate to Kellen or anything because their performance is, his performance is, like, fantastic, but. Oh, yeah, Kellen's great. I. Kellen is a voice acting icon. They had me inspired for like a hot, hot minute to be a voice actor. And then I like gave up. I was like, you know what? No. Valid. I was like, this is hard. I quit. I really, I think my end goal dream would be to be a voice actor. I think I'd still do YouTube if I ever do be, get to become a voice actor. But I, that's been probably my longest held. I would like to do this, you know? Yeah, um, I would it do was, it once it, for a bucket it, list. It, it was game show host. And then it turned into voice actor. Okay, but now your podcast voice actor hosts, ever since. So your podcast, podcast hosts, I mean, I did the the FNAF Jeopardy thing. That was the main reason behind it was I saw Astral Spiff did like a FNAF trivia quiz. And I was oh, like, wait, that was you're right. we quiz. can just we can just do whatever. I'm just gonna be a game show host. Can we do <laughs> can we do FNAF Jeopardy too? And I can be on it because like I wanna join that I'm, now. I wanna try to do it bi monthly. Or no, every other month. Semi monthly? I believe it would be no semi monthly. I want to, yeah, that's right. I want to try to do it semi monthly only because uh, it takes a while to come up with 50 trivia questions that are different from the last one. Um, <laughs> just uh, use so, chat GPT. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> never chat GPT. Um, embrace the AI. Also, also, it'll be wrong like 90% no, of the really time. Chat GPT is just wrong. That could be a whole different video. Like, try to answer <laughs> trivia questions made by an AI. That would be funny because that the challenge is like, okay, what the fuck does the AI think is correct? Like, but I, I would like never use it for like actual trivia. 
Um, but back to the question. Uh, and there, I also bring it up because someone, uh, I think like three or four episodes ago, it was when I had, I believe, Hyperdroid on. One of the theories someone sent in, I literally said it because I just agree with it. It just feels right. I've never liked the theory that Ballora is possessed by Mrs. Afton. Oh, I hate that theory. It's so stupid. The, it, it, like, it's backed by. It doesn't track. Literally, it's not. It's not based in. It's not based in reality. It's just based off of like. Oh, she's kind of motherly, I guess. What I do really like that somebody suggested is that each of the fun times were created, inspired by the other Aftons of the family. Didn't I say that now, in my timeline? I think I said that at least I with have Baby no and Bora. idea. I think I did because I mentioned it was like, didn't you make her just for me? Yeah. Like, so the person who like emailed me is. argued that uh, Baby uh, Elizabeth, obviously, Ballora with Mrs. Afton, sure, like that tracks, motherly, you know, adult female. And then for the two other ones, Funtime Foxy, because Michael was always like the kid who really loved Foxy. He, uh, like, that tracks... And then with um, Funtime Freddy, not only on the posters that kind of like represent the Aftons is the crying child represented a by a Freddy. But yeah, having that like small plush that reassures him or in this case. Bob. Oh, I I love that theory, especially with the um, sticky note room and security breach that yeah. has the characters like or the Aftons kind of almost recreated. I see it like. Yeah, I, I, because when I saw that theory, I was like, oh, yeah, that of recreations. Oh, it absolutely and it also tracks thematically because like Afton is trying to like recreate or like whatever glitch trap or the mimic is is trying to recreate the Aftons. That feels like yeah, that makes sense. Then it create tracks thematically. Everything. Where like ev even before shit got weird, William Afton always was trying to recreate the Aftons in some way. And as yeah, far as security just... breach goes, I agree. I don't think any of them are haunted besides like literally burn trap and the blob. <laughs> like, See, but, and I even then, I feel like the blob is agony. Tangle is possessed, but that's like it. Oh right, Tangle. Um, I don't think the Tangle is possessed by like Just an actual the grass, the ghost. Dirt, the way I dream they'd be. Sorry, <laughs> that's all I can think of when I hear Tangle. Oh, ta the movie Tangled. It, it's it's yeah. my wife's maybe favorite movie. It's in her top five for sure. Um, so oh and. Gosh. My, and her oldest movie. son loves it. So we watch it a lot. So like I, I caught that immediately. <laughs> um, in fact, for our toddler's first Halloween, we dressed as um, Eugene Rapunzel, and Rapunzel. Eugene. And he was in a little... Um, God, I'm blanking. What the fuck is the, the chameleon? Chameleon. Name? Pascal? Pascal. He was in a little the Pascal onesie. Oh, I would have cried. It was very cute. I would have um, sobbed, or like just aggressively sobbed. You would have seen me like sobbing on the sidewalk, and you'd have been like, <laughs> "What the hell is this lady on?" We would have, like, we would have walked faster to get away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with the tangle, I feel like if it's anything, it's agony, um, and just like a mass of all the agony that's been forming throughout everything that's been going on, and not necessarily like a possessed animatronic. That yeah, I agree with that absolutely. Like I just think, oh gosh, um, I don't know. I think it's not like possessed, possessed because I think that would just be beating the dead horse. And like the kids are already dead, Fair. just like stop beating them. Like that's just mean. Well, I think we're also going to get more information on that specifically because like with Help Wanted Two, it seems like we're going to be Vanessa like getting the Pizzaplex ready for security breach. Yes. Like that's what it reads like to me. And that being said, if you look around in the Helpy minigame, where we're like doing medical attention on Helpy. I'm sorry, the little gas one, mask on him was so funny. Oh, it's very funny. Oh one, gosh, I think I she's practicing it. to do it. I think she's practicing for burn trap and for human victims. But two, if you look around, obviously that's where Scrap Baby comes in, but you're in a room with two vents on either side of you. I think during that minigame, we're literally going to be in the, in the underground Fnastics. pizzeria, like practicing. Yeah, I think that's a that's actually really solid. I didn't even think but of that. But if like, that's true, does that mean Scrap Baby was still around before Security Breach? Which then begs the question of, did if Henry's she is, whole then monologue like, mean nothing? And I'm going to throw a temper right? tantrum. Like, like that, that's the thing that I'm like, it, 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 if we are literally Vanessa, part of me thinks that 
Scrap Baby being here means that FNAF 6 didn't work. But then the other issue is Sister Location is here. Yeah. See, because I'm huh? thinking... Like, Scrap Baby can't exist if the fun times are still here. It could be that, like, Gregory... It's going to be how Gregory got possessed in a different game. Or what if it just didn't have any lore I don't at think all it's a game. we just have some peace? Now, just Sister Location might be a game. That's possible. Um, I And I did... I mentioned this in my, my video a couple days I ago. I literally watched it, like, right before I popped on. and be so real. So... You mentioned Gregory. I do think that son that has no explanation. I think that's Gregory becoming possessed. Yeah. Whatever that scene in full is going to be, or not possessed, becoming like controlled. Possessed. We're gonna call it possessed because everything in the uh, series yeah, that, is possessed. That would be. I would argue those are the the what the animatronics that are and are not possessed. Um. Other than that, I agreed with you. We're like FNAF four. No, FNAF three just spring trap, and then you could argue the phantoms. I mean, if we're going um, off of Ditophobia, then they're literally just a bunch of mannequins. So, which I'm yeah. gonna be so I mean, real. There's I a think chance we mannequins go are there. more terrifying than hallucinogenic gas any day. Like, I'm sorry, Nightmare Animatronics. Nah, those little guys are cute. Let me just give them a little squeeze. Mannequins. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. There's a non-zero chance that we go there and help wanted too. If we're already fucking around down there. Um, yeah, no, because, I like, if, really if FNAF hope. six is there, FNAF six is near the FNAF four house, or if FNAF six is near the is near the FNAF four it house, it could be which the construction the of the pizza bunker. plex. Because you remember how one is one with the um the foxy mini game. What if it's that? Yeah, that'd be really cool if it was that weird in between where you see it in the um Halloween DLC with the ball shooter, the foxy. Oh, guy, oh, like oh, yeah. Where like you go off course and you see the like other shit. Yeah, you see them all being constructed in the background. That would be a really, really good, like, kind of like, it's the prequel to what happened. It's like the origin of Glitch Trap. And I would much rather see that than a continuation of the story. Because at this point, we're just beating the dead horse. We need prequels. We need uh, need to fill in the gaps. Um, Yeah, because why are we making this go 50 years in the future? (laughs) Oh, yeah. 50 years in the future. I want to go, like, 60 years in the past. Please, um, Scott, I beg of you. We need we need gaps between Help Wanted Security Breach, between FNAF 6 and Help Wanted, and pre-timeline, uh, like early timeline. Pre-timeline. We, need, we need those gaps filled in. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, our next question comes from Grayson. They, them, thank you for your question. Everyone talks about what animatronics are most important, but what do you think animat- what do you? But what animatronics do you think are least important? I would have said Balloon Boy, but Balloon World is a thing. Uh, thank you for your question, Grayson. And I think to make the question meaningful, we should try to stick to, like, relevant characters. Funtime Foxy <sighs> is so irrelevant. I'm sorry. Honestly, like, Funtime Foxy and Funtime Freddy. Funtime Freddy and Funtime Foxy, absolutely, completely useless, like, plot-wise. Um, I would, I honestly, I would argue, weirdly enough, Baby... And I only say that because they talking about like what she does on screen, which is nothing. Yeah, I, I, I'm I of the opinion that. by the time sister she location really begins, think. baby is already not in the exoskeleton anymore. I think that's the reason we don't see her is I think by the time sister location begins, baby is already entered. Oh, and is I just agree. slowly amassing everybody else. I No, I completely agree with that because that's why. Because I think it's like maybe she overheard like the employees or something talking about, oh, there's this new guy coming in. His name is like Michael, like Michael or like Mike. And Mm -hmm. she goes like, oh. And like a sleeper agent, she wakes up and takes off her exoskeleton. Literally. Somebody needs to animate that like baby, like literally like slipping. You like those like rippable, like those pants that you like rip off. Yeah. I need somebody on Twitter to please animate. Baby ripping her exoskeleton off like those removable magic trick pants. Please. I will love you I would also if un- you do this because this is necessary. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'd also argue DJ Music Man because he's like the coolest oh my gosh, to security yes. breach and he does fucking nothing. <laughs> like, no, literally. He's there for like 10 Music seconds and he's not even in ruin. Yeah, no. Um, Here's the thing. If Matt Pat was gonna was gonna like not hire you before he's definitely not gonna hire you now 
Just oh, saying. because like I, you just said I, that no, Music d- Man is irrelevant. Listen, I love DJ Music Man, but he's not at all important to the actual story of, of Security Breach or FNAF. No, he in definitely is just useless. But I like him. He, he's, he's just, just kind of. I think he's just a silly, like he's a silly little guy. But like, he, also he's he just is a too silly long little guy. But he is kind of just there. I would love to see someone dress their dog up as DJ Music Man. That would be adorable. But other than that, if we're talking about like relevant characters, I can't think of anybody else besides like the other fun times and DJ Music Man. Because everyone else is at least a little important, I would argue. I'm going to argue, I would argue, honestly, that the only thing that the core four bring to the table is the fact that they're possessed. Yeah, and but like, that is kind of the it's point. A, it's so like, like a big deal. Like that's like the big deal. But like other than that, they like they're just like ha ha haunted robots. Like you could literally fill in Bonnie, Freddy, Chica, Foxy with like Balloon Boy, Dee Dee, JJ, and the like Spooky Dee Dee from um what's it called Ultimate Custom Night? Oh, X O R. It would be the exact same. Yeah, X O R. It would be the exact same premise. And now and I do want a FNAF like, One mod where it's just four different Balloon Boys. Please. Um, no, and I, really I get what, great, I get what you mean, but like, like at that like point, scare. like I, I know what it's you mean, but part of that horrific. argument is like, I, oh yeah, but if you, part of that argument you're making is just like <laughs> this character. Now, keep in mind, just take haunting. away everything that makes that character important. Now consider the character is no longer important. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just like, well, I mean, it's just haunted. Like that's it. Like, geez, anybody could be haunted. Like, pick something new. Go with, like, like you know, be unique. Stop being, start being a trendsetter. Stop being possessed. That's so, that's so 1987. Like, geez. True. Um, but, Grayson, thank you for your question. And I think we're at, like, on my end, we're at, like, almost an, an hour and eight minutes. So, I think we have one more Yeah, I'm question. at an hour and eight minutes. Okay. So, I'm at an hour one seven. more question from Toad. He, him, thank you for your question. There's been some hints about Shadow Freddy getting more lore significance lately. And if it's true, I've been waiting for him to be relevant for a few years. After all, he is my favorite FNAF character. But anyways, to get to the point, what role do you think Shadow Freddy will do in probably the near future? Will he really impact the lore that much or will he be a little bit relevant but not too much? Thank you for your question, Toad. Um, I, of the pair, the only one I see getting lore relevance in the games soon is Shadow Bonnie. And even I then, I think that's a stretch. They, I just um, the like, only reason I say that is because Shadow Bonnie was in FNAF AR. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Is like, Shadow Freddy really hasn't been relevant since ever. FNAF 3. FNAF 3 maybe, and FNAF 2, but he was just an Easter egg in both of those. So like FNAF 2, I wouldn't... At least FNAF 3, he's like kind of the star of Follow Me. But that's about... Yeah, oh, I, I, but literally like, for, I forgot Follow Me exists. I'm sorry whoopsie but like that's like the only time shadow freddy matters yeah and like, also like you could again replace shadow freddy with shadow bonnie and it literally would not matter like it doesn't add I was anything thinking of this. specifically freddy because of the nature of shadow freddy part of me is wondering if shadow freddy is just a physical suit and just a purple Fred be- freddy because of the movie so in the because in the movie we have that shadow freddy like suit that max gets stuffed in and yeah. thinking about how Shadow Freddy has affected FNAF in general, it was an Easter egg where Shadow Freddy could just be in a back room somewhere, which would track. And in Follow Me, that raises the possibility that William was leading them to the back room using that suit. And then once he's in the safe back room, he takes it off and he rushes them. I like that. Like, I like that a lot. That's a good idea. So Shadow Freddy might not be a shadow animatronic, period. It might just be that f- even in FNAF 3 it mentioned, hey, we got some spare suits in the meantime. They're not really relevant to f- like what we have here but, or appropriate, but they work. So that literally might be yeah. like an unpainted Freddy. And like people might be like, oh, it's the mediocre melodies, but why can't it be all of them? Yeah, why can't it be that and Purple Freddy? Like Purple Freddy would work. You think about Nightmare. And I know it's just an inverse yeah. of Golden Freddy, but it still had to come from somewhere. Um, so like I, I th- I'm starting to think Shadow Freddy might not be like because Shadow Bonnie very clearly is some kind of agony monster. We see it in Fazbear Frights. We see it in FNAF AR. We see it in three, in two, like, it's and it's everywhere. always pure black. 
It's always that pure black with a, a bunch of text. Meanwhile, Shadow Freddy, always been purple, has only shown up in FNAF 2, FNAF 3, and FNAF World. Not so, like, I, I'm starting to think... I'm starting to think Shadow Freddy is just a physical suit. That's... And if, that, kind of if that's true, he's not coming back. Straight up. Yeah. I mean, like, you think of, like, what you said about Max is it was a physical suit. And it yeah. could have been the Easter egg, like, Sparky. But yeah. I also... I feel like they wouldn't have put something as significant as Shadow Freddy in there if it was just, like, a reference like Sparky. There was a moment. A because they could A terrifying moment. Where when I first saw the purple suit next to Sparky, my brain went, oh, it's the hoax wall. It's Sparky and the purple man animatronic. <laughs> and I was like, I was do, do you remember that terrified. FNAF 2 hoax? No, I mean, I literally was legitimately terror. I'm going to be so real. For the first five years of the FNAF branch, let me think. First five? Like four or five years of the FNAF fam franchise i loved it but i was literally absolutely petrified and did not sleep for five years straight like i wish i was joking i went to therapy over this um and so that was one of those things that literally kept me up at night from ages the like purple man 11, like 11 to like ages i'm not even joking like 15 or 16 which is kind it's, of embarrassing it's... but it was so <laughs> disturbingly uncanny like honestly i hated it, it. It, is, it is it's a very uncanny animatronic design just the like round head with the empty features yeah i, I love the uncanny valley effect but lord have mercy that was like horrific i will say I was that like, was my oh, my goodness. biggest complaint with the toys has always been i think they could have been really scary and effective if they all did what toy chica does aka take off the snout hollow the eyes yes if all three of them so did that and it's such a that. minor change it doesn't like make them it's over pretty, the top yeah. it doesn't like add a bunch of spikes on them or some shit it's just a little thing to make them way scarier yeah no it's like the thing that uh, yeah said that they should have done um with the like mini arena mini game is they should have just done a reverse animation of the spring lock suit like closing and then just did the red animation that's from um the scooper I think that's who yeah. mentioned that. But I'm like, stuff like that, just little, little things that would have added to like the horror and just added more detail. Because I think one of the big things Snap was missing a lot of for having so many lore details, it missed some of like actual gameplay mechanic details that totally should have been in there that just weren't. Yeah. And I think that is also partly just Scott uh, learning to develop as he's making these games. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, definitely. They, were, they weren't his first games, but you can feel the like rudimentary nature of FNAF one, two and three a lot more than you can four five and six. Yeah, definitely. Like I think four is probably four and six were more refined than five by far, which is saying yeah, something. Uh, five has like a five, lot of problems. Five is a, kind of a disaster, but we love it. We love yeah. it regardless. Cause it's one of those things where like when you play and I've been seeing this a lot cause my timeline has been like really game dev heavy. And I think it's just who I follow. Um, cause I don't know shit about game dev, but I've been seeing a lot of people talk about like, we love Undertale. It is held together with twine and duct tape. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's no. That's like, the entire FNAF franchise is held together with dollar store like scotch tape. But that's the thing. Like with Undertale, I've never felt that playing the game. I play Undertale, and like as someone who doesn't know anything about game dev, I don't see the like duct tape of Undertale. Whereas like a game developer plays it, and they're like, "Oh, this thing is barely holding together. It's still a great game." But it's barely held together. But it's barely um, whereas, together. Whereas, like, when I play FNAF I don't know much 1, about game dev, I, but... I see the duct tape. Yeah. Which I think it also might be more we're innately familiar, and there's so many videos on the game mechanics and stuff. And I've True. watched And it's also it. short. I just totally blank. Yeah, it's really short. The, like, there's a lot long. of Undertale. Uh, apparently, Where there's, like, uh, someone the shared... There's, like, a room in Undertale that's, like, a dialogue tree room. And the entire room is just a very, very long tree of yes, no prompts in the code, and which is very funny to me. I Again, I know nothing about game dev, but everyone was or like, N. People, people were just talking about just, I, there's a, an, a YouTube short account. I cannot tell you the name because I do not remember, but he was talking, he like showcased it. He's like, this is probably the worst coded thing I've ever seen in my entire life. This is also probably one of the most popular indie games ever made. Go make games. Like, literally. So... Um, but yeah, I, when I play FNAF, and I think that's part of the reason why a lot of those horror details are missing from FNAF 1, 2, and 3, 
for the most part and is see, just i don't FNAF think scott one was, really was fantastic getting used to it for its time oh, yeah. fnaf one but like probably my second favorite fnaf game and i do think my is the second scariest fnaf game in the franchise oh i agree it's only i think it only loses to four because four you have to like really really listen and crank your volume all the way up and then it's like my hot take, you just like fall over and die my hot take fnaf 4 is the third scariest my scariest ranking is help wanted fnaf 1 fnaf 4 yeah but that's also um, and help wanted chicken. sorry fair but help wanted is cheating because it's vr yeah and help, just inherently like them being not, eight feet tall and next to me is terrifying yeah no that that's the point of it it does make it scary but it's in its own category for scary fair so I feel if like we don't count, count fnaf if we don't count help wanted then fnaf one then fnaf four because i think fnaf as a franchise does best as uncanny horror and I think FNAF 1 nails that way more than FNAF 4 does. Oh, definitely. Because FNAF 4 isn't uncanny. They're very, like, Freddy Krueger-esque. Yeah. And so it's not, like, it's it is, it's just that. It's just, boo. Well, ah. it's like, um I forget who. Somebody was talking about, it, like, you can tell Scott is really good at rendering uncanny, but doesn't often do it. When a perfect example, like, FNAF 6, not a really scary game. Um the salvage mini games are so effective because even with something like lefty where like the design of lefty not scary but the way lefty is rendered in the salvage mini game is really fucking good it's yeah i just think like i think of it like the type of uncanny horror that i like and i know they're overdone because we mentioned it but the vhs tapes are the mm-hmm. most like scrumptily issues type of uncanny horror like they're just so fantastic in my opinion because I, I love Baddington, that is the type of uncanny I love. I think the, yeah, I the think, Baddington one's really knocked out of the park. Um, I think that's the one I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, Baddington and uh, Squimpus McGrimpus, but they got canceled, so we yeah can't we're not gonna talk about that one. Um, and then we're not gonna apply. I will say, but Baddington the only other analog horror that I've really liked is Mandela Catalog and Vita Carnis. Those have been the two that I've really liked. Um. Vita Carnus mainly because there's so much practical effects in Vita Carnus, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, there's some new, um, like, sister location style ones. I'll have to send them to you because they were, like, really good that I think you'd like. Um, I'll to see them. Because like, I, absolutely... I, I tend to not like um, a lot of the VH. Uh, my hot take, I guess, is that I've never really liked the Walton Files. Maybe I just haven't gotten into them the right way, but every time I've tried to, I just don't like the art style. I, I think that's my hot take. It's just not for me. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's a bad art style. Just not I your just cup don't of like tea. It very much. It's not your cup of tea. Yeah. Not your um, cup of tea. But Toad, thank you for your question, and I think we are about at time. So uh, again, yeah, well, if you have any questions or theories you want reviewed on the podcast, send them to Freddy Fazbear Pizza Podcast at gmail dot com. The link is in the description. Um, Jojo, do you have anything coming up? Anything you want to shout out? Uh. I think I, I did the the ornaments. Definitely the ornaments, yeah. of course. Those are only available until December 1st. Otherwise, follow my Instagram. It's where I'm most active. Discord server is always fun. Um, I appear once a week and I say hi um, when I can. Sometimes I forget and that's okay. Um, but that's a good time. Um, and definitely we need more people in there because we're kind of losing steam a little bit because just a lot of us are really busy right now uh what else uh i mean youtube subscribe to my youtube i mean it's fun go watch the unhinged timeline video if you haven't yet it was it really was like a uh it's like a passion project for me it was very much so that video is my roman empire honestly that, um, i mean that's where i i the my channel really got kicked off from i i was I wanted to switch to highly edited stuff and I was like, fuck it, security breach is coming out. Let me just make a timeline. And yeah. then that got like way more views than I thought it would. I was like, okay, we're doing FNAF now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was either going to be that or I was going to be a PokeTuber. It was whatever took off first and FNAF took off first. So FNAF took off first, which is, I don't think I could ever uh, imagine you as a PokeTuber though. Like it would have been kind of sad. It's I, I'm very I found this out on my timeline yesterday, but apparently I'm very similar to ID in the sense that uh, I like Pokemon actually a lot more than I like FNAF. <laughs> <laughs> I just really I mean, fucking like Pokemon. Pokemon is fantastic though, so it's I like FNAF. You know, Don't get me wrong. Obviously, I like FNAF, but yeah, I'm an 
artist I just by trade really though. Like so yeah, my thing is like like ID. I'm an artist by trade, and so definitely I'd rather my art take off than the FNAF. But you know what? I'm not gonna say Fair. no to FNAF. Matt Pat, hit me up, please. I'm right <laughs> here. I want an internship so bad. Please. I will do anything. I will edit thumbnails for six months for free if I can have an internship, please. I'm begging you. Uh, I'll email Matt you Pat, my portfolio. Since you're for a third definitely time. since you're definitely <laughs> listening, uh, after you finish talking to Jojo about the internship thing, uh, hit me up for FNAF Pretty. Love to have you on. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. No, what if Matt Pat emails both of us? That'd be really funny. Um, that would be hilarious. I, look, I, I think there's definitely a chance that he's seen the podcast maybe an episode or two. Uh, I don't think he's made it to the end of many of them. And not because, like, anything knock on him or anything. Uh, he's a very busy guy. Like, yeah, no, <laughs> these are long podcast episodes. <laughs> like, Matt Pat is literally, like, reading the books, like, and just flipping through all of them. And then having a breakdown on the side like scott why have you done this to me like please Talking scott about no. again. I, oh, i've been in God. the i've been fighting for fasgu no I've, i'm fighting for it i tweeted out my hot take i think the story that fasgu is like involved in i think that's a really solid horror story it's not very fnaf but i think it's, it's a really solid FNAF. story yeah no the thing that was most fnaf was uh the mpreg one. Oh yeah and uh on I that say that as i'm literally drawing <laughs> oh yeah and on that note thank you for watching the freddy fazbear pizza podcast where the pizza abilities are endless i hope to enjoy your future patronage bye bye for now